so what do we have here? Let's take a little fly over here. This is my uh, 1088 XLD. As far as where it's at today, I'm still missing a few, few components, mainly uh, SIP resistors, which you can kind of see in this area right, right here, both for the uh, address lines for the CF board or adapter, or whatever you want to call it, and also uh, SIP resistors associated with the uh, audio mix-in for the MIDI as well as uh, Covox and a few other things. And what else am I missing? Oh yeah, right, right, right there. I'm missing four capacitors for my paddle inputs, so I don't, I'm not able to test those either at the moment. But uh, other than that, uh, it's it's pretty well complete, and I have been running quite a few different tests on it lately. And so far, other than a little scare I had, where uh, uh, this is also prior to me having stuffed in a few more parts late, uh, just recently. I had this little scare where when I brought the system up it was basically acting like it had timing issues which which was kind of reminiscent of, of the uh, uh, 1088 XEL board when I brought the first version of that up so I was kind of going like oh shit I'm going to have to do a lot, of, a lot of mods or something on this guy to get it to actually work you know but as it turned out the problem was the swap button circuit was always on. And that was because uh, I hadn't updated the firmware in this guy right here, which is the uh, TK2 keyboard chip. Um, basically, the XLD is stealing or using the uh, original second keyboard port lines as a way to address the mouse port select and the swap uh, latch button features so that that can all be done through the keyboard on this guy instead of having to actually have physical switches. So let's go ahead and power this baby up here. Boop. And let's take a look over here. Oh, there we go. Always nice to see that, huh? Oh, I'm loading a, loading a game in here that needs to have the option button down. I forgot to do that. So this is coming in over the uh, SAO of the PC at a divisor of zero. like this putting this up just nice to you know you can hear the stereo and uh, gives you quite a, quite a bit of visual stuff moving around and, uh, and I kind of like the <laughs> kind of like the background it sounds it's cute um, anyway so as you can see uh, we actually have a, a working board here and right now I'm in the uh, pal mode which by the way, it's pretty easy uh, to engage on this board. Um, all we got to do is just change that little blue jumper there, and it automatically will switch to one oscillator or the, or the other. Uh, still need to replace the GTIA and the Antic, but at least the uh, all the crystals crystals can now be, you know, soldered in place and fixed. Um, no no need for fiddling around with a little a little socket for the crystal. So let me show you the uh, the mouse port select stuff here. Okay, so, so now this is actually controlled through the keyboard. It's going to be a Alt M. And every time I press it, it basically steps through the two possible port selections here. So like right right now, we're basically with the green light next to that's a joystick one. Let's see here. Oops, sorry for that. That's joystick one. Um, that, that's saying that the mouse is right now assigned to, to, to that joystick port. If I press M again, um, now we have no selection. Press it one more time, and now we have 
joystick 2, which is our mouse port. Press it once again, no selection, and press it once again, and there's our uh, mouse port back at number 1. I, I normally like to leave it at, at number 2, which uh, several programs tend to look for the mouse on, on that particular one. Uh, right now, if I look down here, you can see that red LED. That should actually be green right now, but um, the, the uh, IDE CF board is not in place, so it tends to kind of float and it defaults to red, which indicates um, disk activity, which, you know, basically we don't have that happening right now. So let me go, go ahead and plug that guy in. Oh, actually, let me grab this one. Oops, sorry about that. So you can see here. So let me just plug in a CF adapter board. And that will basically let the... Uh... There we go. So now it's, now it's just green. And that just tells you that you have power. If I hit uh, uh, Alt-N, it turns yellow. Red and green both come on at the same time. And so that just lets us know that we've latched the uh, disk swap feature. If I... Uh... Let me see here. If I go ahead and I reboot, it should go ahead and clear that, which it did. So, uh, other than not having a, a CF drive up and running to test with, uh, I've got, gone through and done quite a few different checks already, and everything seems to be working okay. Um, so let me see. The only thing, yeah, the only things I haven't tested so far, other than the CF drive, I haven't tested the, uh, you know, the MIDI board, uh, mainly because I don't have the SIP resistors to mix its output back into the um, audio stream of the XLD board. I also need to go go ahead and program a uh, a PIC chip for the MIDI control function and plug that in there as well. Um, but overall, I think things are working pretty pretty decent here. If, if we look here, this is our this is our power supply filtering uh, voltage doubler, and our plus five and plus twelve volt regulated supplies. Uh, this right here is the little switching regulator replacement for the normal linear uh, regulator seventy eight oh five. Uh, this actually runs very, very cool, which is which is nice. It doesn't require a heat sink. Uh, this green green light just basically lets you know you have five volts, and the green light over here lets you know you have twelve volts running. Uh, the the little red LED over here will show you if you have MIDI activity, which we obviously don't right now. And the plus and plus five and the ground and the twelve volts are also available on this plug here as well as on the SIO ports. We, we actually have reinstated the missing 12 volts on those like they were on the 400-800 series. And I still retain the SIO aux, although I'm only going with a 5-pin version since, uh, you know, the extra signals were really provided originally for support of the MIDI board that iVOP was working on. And since MIDI is now inclusive to this design, there's really no reason to do that anymore. Let me go grab, I have a, a mock-up over here. Let me grab that. So here is, so here is the 1050 case, and we have a XLD board laying inside there with a couple connectors just uh, dropped in place to kind of show you how everything fits. Um, I will need to, let me see if I can get a little bit better view. That, there we go. I will need to enlarge the hole that used to be for the drive select so that we can actually have access to the DIN 13 audio video plug. But other than that, that's really the only modification that's going to be required because uh, the um, joystick ports and the uh, PS2 ports and the audio out connector and some of the status lights are going to be done by this little I.O. board. This was the original design here. I'm kind of looking at a new design where I'm actually going to add some tabs 
that will lock me into the original pins that were used to hold the floppy drive in this guy. Uh, basically the idea behind this is so if I push or pull on the connectors um, it's going to be much more rigid. It's not going to tend to flex back and forth because we are on top of some one inch, uh, just two one inch spacers which you know, tend, you know tends to kind of like uh, bend a little bit. Uh, probably more the board than the spacers but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that by using this new design I should probably have a pretty nice setup. And I really need this first board to be very, this first uh, uh, daughter board to be very, very well secured because I plan to stack another one on top of this. And that's going to be for the uh, DIN plugs for the MIDI as well as a place to mount the CF adapter board as, for uh, front panel access. And then, of course, there'll be a, uh, uh, I'll need to make some sort of a panel, probably like a front panel. Uh, express type of thing made out of aluminum machined and I've kind of adjusted things so it looks like about a three millimeter panel thickness should be about right I'm gonna uh, use the um, I'm gonna use these little the little uh, guys here uh, although I might replace these with screws instead of these little standoffs uh, to actually hold the panel in place uh, I probably also put some uh, right angle brackets on the second board that's going to stack above this one and I might do some like um, well, front panel express can do do like studs that are invisible on the front of the panel but they stick out in the back and I'll use that to secure it even better to the upper board kind of making it like one whole assembly that way so uh, anyhow that's the project and uh, so far so good <laughs>